This is this is on government government page. Live on the government page and then What is that? What is the the government page? I don't know. I don't know what channel that is. The channel Oh it's on is so when it goes when it goes live on the government page. Everyone else is live streaming also. The government channel, Buffalo, New York. That's what it's called. What is it called? The government channel. Are you on Facebook? No, I can get the. the About a minute, about a minute, maybe less than that, okay? Yes? Hello. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll. yeah. That's all about Yeah, I don't know. Are we all good with mic checks? You sound good? Mic check, one, two, one, two. I don't know. <laughs> you say you don't know? You see the levels. You see the levels? The levels look good? I think so. All right. Mic check, one, two, one, two. We'll, we'll, we'll wait. We will wait. Kurt, my check sound it sound good? Yep, sounds That's good. good. Thank All right. you. Yep. Tommy, are you ready? So when he comes Okay, here we go, folks. Here we go. Okay. Everybody set? Tommy? All right, good morning all. So as everyone is aware, about a little after 8 o'clock this morning, a phone call uh, had come into two different locations within uh, the Buffalo Police Department. One call came into our Seneca Street Police Garage. That call was not clear. It was staticky, and the call dropped. Uh, another call was made to our C District Station House, stating that there was an individual, stating that he was going to shoot up the school, that he had bombs, and that uh, the sound of gunfire played in the background. Our uh, lieutenant at C District immediately got on the radio, put out the information for Delta cars and for school resource officers who all immediately responded. They were on scene very quickly. As they got on scene, uh, they quickly assessed there was no commotion, no other 911 calls were coming in. However, they started making entry into the various buildings. Uh, as you all may be aware, the Nichols campus is a large campus. Uh, it's a, 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 a sprawled out. There are multiple buildings, including a sports facility. But as officers were arriving on scene, they were making entry into all the different buildings. Uh, more cars were arriving. Uh, we, uh, the school went, immediately went into a lockdown procedure. And it took approximately uh, two hours, a little less than two hours, for the campus to be fully cleared. Uh, that also included the search with, uh, I believe, about five canines. That included uh, Buffalo Police. Uh, the NFTA police and Department of Homeland Security canines. Um, we have also become aware 
that there were, I believe, three other locations across New York State, uh, some in the local vicinity but out of Erie County, as well as downstate that have received similar calls. Uh, so our threat management unit is leading the investigation from the Buffalo Police standpoint. We are working with the state police and the FBI. We will conduct a full and exhaustive investigation, and anyone found to have made uh, these fake calls will be prosecuted to the fullest extent. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions. You know, you, you have calls coming into other schools across the state. Uh, you know, one could presume something, but I'm not going to make those presumptions. That's what our investigation is going to get into. Uh, you know, obviously working with our, our, our state and federal partners, we are going to look into that. The calls that were made weren't made to 911. They were made to specific uh, police locations? Yes, the, uh, the calls, and I don't know the exact order uh, at this moment, but a call came into our Seneca Street police garage. The, uh, um, uh, the mechanic at the uh, garage had answered the phone, said that the, the, the call was very staticky, wasn't really able to make out much, and then the call was disconnected. Um, once uh, the, he became aware of the information of what has gone on, then he notified internally through our uh, command that he, he too received the call. Were these with the same phone number? I'm not going to get into the specifics of that evidence at this point. Seven. Were there, there were no incidents at the other schools where these calls came? To the best of my knowledge, there has been uh, no confirmed incidents that occurred. I'm only going to comment on ours, though. And how many other schools besides Nichols? The information I have right now is three other schools across the state. Where were these schools? Uh, there was, uh, I believe, Steuben County, Batavia, and then one uh, downstate. Which one in Batavia? I don't have that information. Have you been able to trace where these calls came from? Uh, our investigators are working with that evidence now, that information. There was a lot of parents that were showing up uh, trying to get their kids and things like that. Were parents notified? So, uh, I mean, our, our responsibility at that time is obviously to, to make the school state to clear the school. The school has their protocols and procedures on going into a lockdown. You know, what notifications went out, I can't answer as to how quickly those were, but uh, I know I started receiving phone calls from, uh, you know, some people that are friends that have uh, students there. So I know that information got out pretty quick. That's a question for Nichols. I can't answer that question. Seven. Commissioner, there's a uh, bulletin going around with NYPD that tomorrow is a day of hate uh, white supremacists against anti-Semitism. Have you been aware of any of those instances or circumstances? Well, uh, you know, we have uh, an intelligence commander within our department that works, our chief of detectives, and we have a lieutenant that works with the intelligence community, uh, not just within New York State, but uh, within uh, the country and internationally. We get these bulletins, we communicate, so we, uh, you know, we certainly give them the due attention that they deserve. You know, we monitor what is, uh, you know, has a potential to occur nationally and, of course, locally. You know, not everything that we get um, is designated for uh, a, a local presence. Um, you know, sometimes these bulletins go out and they try to uh, engage a lot of different areas to uh, uh, participate. That doesn't always happen, but uh, you know we are, are very much in tune both in the local, state, and the national level with the intelligence community. So this is the city that responded within seconds to an actual mass shooting just in May. The amount of resources to just respond to Nichols, there is no knowledge at this point, so you mentioned it, that anyone who is doing this Sure. I mean, the, the, the response of the Buffalo Police Department, you've heard me say this multiple times uh, on May 14th, was nothing short of, uh, you know, incredible. It was, it, was, uh, it was immediate. And I can say the same thing that happened this morning. I was on the radio. I was listening to it as it was occurring. I heard the coordinated effort of our patrol officers uh, getting on scene, uh, covering all sides of the building, getting into buildings. Uh, you know, the, the response was, uh, it was, was appropriate. It was very fast. I commend the officers for their very quick response and immediate entry into the buildings. Uh, you know, what, what uh, those that want to make these calls that, you know, that maybe think they're being funny, that think they're being cute, um, it's not going to be tolerated. Uh, that's something for the district attorney's office to speak on on the, on the level of charges and prosecutions. I can just say that from our end, we will certainly charge any and all appropriate charges and we will push for the maximum penalty. Examples have to be set. Who's involved in the investigation, the FBI and the district attorney's office? 
so our, uh, our, our newly created threat management unit, which handles uh, calls just like this, uh, threats to mass shooting, I'm sorry, threats to mass gatherings, threats of mass shootings to schools, churches, you know, various things. Uh, the FBI is actually embedded with our threat management unit. Uh, and then obviously the state police, uh, you know, working with, uh, you know, the areas of other um, spots within the state. Tim? You know, you, uh, you know, we have policies and protocols, you know, for these and how they play out. Uh, but when situations actually occur, you know, the officers just, uh, it's just kind of second nature and they just, you know, they just go with it. They get in. They know what they have to do. They know what the job is that has to be done. They know they've got to get into the buildings and they've got to start clearing buildings. Uh, the NFTA police sent a couple of canine dogs, as is the Department of Homeland Security. There's uh, multiple buildings. It's a large campus, so it would take... Uh, you know more than the dogs that we had available to uh, for working so that's where that mutual aid comes in but uh, you know we had our D district officers responding we had our school resource officers responding and there was other districts that also uh, assisted over there are there law enforcement agencies besides the NFDA? those are the ones that I'm aware of if I'm missing anyone I apologize to those agencies that may have responded I'm just not aware of that right now but now on the investigative side of this uh, this is where the, some of those other agencies are going to get involved is this an example of the threat management system working? Is it a threat management uh, group, I guess, whatever it is? Yeah, this is exactly what they were designed for. So we have four detectives and a detective sergeant. This is exactly some of the work that, uh, that they would get involved in, along with uh, the, the, uh, the investigation and the filing of emergency risk protection orders, the execution of those orders, you know, among, uh, you know, like I said, the threats to mass gatherings, churches, schools, you know, things of that nature. Is this the first time that they've kind of been put into action? No, they've been working right along. They've uh, they've they filed uh, numerous emergency risk protection orders. Uh, you know, we've had threats that were made to schools uh, during the overnight hours that they've intervened in. Uh, you know, just recently they made an arrest on on a threat that was made to a local school, and they had an individual in custody by five o'clock in the morning. So they get called in as uh, if a threat comes in. We're activating them no matter what time it is, and we're getting a presence out there. And we're looking to take someone into custody. And, and again, we will make examples out of anyone that makes any type of a threat. And as of now, there's been no arrest made, sir. I'm sorry? There's no arrest made now? On this, uh, not, no, not yet. Which school would that be? Uh, there was a threat that was made against Hutch Tech uh, about, uh, I don't know, two, two three weeks ago. Uh, it turned out it was a homeless individual. So, uh, you know, we deemed it, um, you know, that it wasn't. Um, you know, somebody that was involved in the school, and we had the individual custody by, I think, about 5 o'clock in the morning. I've heard that some of these calls have been placed at individuals specifically in the past. Are you aware of that? Has anything like this happened specifically to Nichols in the past? Some of the uh, calls were... These types of calls. ...that were placed within Nichols. I don't have any information off the top of my head right now on, on past calls there. I mean, you know, unfortunately, we respond to threats that occur at schools. Um, you know, none that I'm aware of rose to this level. So it's, uh, we, we have uh, an officer um, over by the parking lot. Uh, we're going to have a presence there. It's my understanding that uh, students had already begun leaving the campus. Uh, it's also my information that parents are and have been picking some students up. Uh, I don't know what uh, Nichols plans on doing officially. You'd have to talk to Nichols on whether they're closing the school. Uh, but it's, uh, my information is that uh, some students have uh, voluntarily left. All right, one or two more if we have this call came in from Western New York. I'm sorry? I'm not going to get into where that call came from at this time. That's part of our investigation. One more. One more. Are we good? All right. Thanks, anybody. Everybody. Okay, thanks. Any updates? Thank you. I'll let you know. Okay, thanks. thanks. Email. Text. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Commissioner.